Welcome to my very first programming tutorial. My name is Dan and in this video I'm going to teach you the absolute basics of programming. Maybe you want to code but you just don't know where to start. Or maybe you've got a little experience but you're looking for a refresher. Whatever your situation, I hope that you'll find something useful here. In this lesson, we're going to cover getting set up and writing your very first program, writing for loops, branching logic or if else statements, and we're going to wrap up with a little programming challenge called FizzBuzz. Before we can start programming, we need to choose a language. There are tons of different programming languages out there, which I might cover in another video. But the truth is, the language doesn't really matter at this stage. What's important is the fundamentals, and they're going to be the same across all languages. Once you've learned the basics, you should be able to pick up any programming language without too much trouble. In this tutorial, I'll be using Python. It's a simple language without too much syntax, and in my opinion, it's quite beginner friendly. Python code is run by an interpreter. In other words, you write a script, you feed it to the Python interpreter, and the interpreter goes through your script and executes it line by line. You can install the Python interpreter on your computer directly, but you can also use an online interpreter if you want to get started quickly. The first program that most people write is called Hello World. The purpose of this program is really just to verify that everything is working correctly by outputting the message, hello world. In Python, this program consists of a single line. If you're using an online interpreter, you can just type this into the prompt and hit run. It should print hello world in the output pane. If you want to run this on your own machine, you have to type this into a text editor and save it to a file. By convention, Python files have a .py extension. For example, hello world.py. You can then run this file through the command prompt First, open a command prompt to the directory where you saved the file. The easiest way to do this on Windows is to navigate to the directory in the file explorer, click in the address bar and enter cmd. Finally, type python, then a space, then your file name. For example, python hello world.py. If you get a message like python is not recognized as an internal or external command, then it means that your operating system doesn't know where to find the python interpreter which suggests that maybe it's not installed correctly. If you know the location of the Python interpreter on your system, then you can try using the full path to the executable instead, like this. And if you made it this far, congratulations, you've just written your first program. Obviously this program is not very interesting, so let's spice things up a bit. I'm gonna introduce something called a for loop and I've chosen this very deliberately. For loops are an invaluable tool in any language, and in my experience, they act as a sort of make or break barrier. If you can't master the for loop, then to be blunt, maybe programming is not for you. Let's start with an example. Suppose we were extremely bored and we wanted to write a program to print numbers one to 10. We could do this using 10 print statements but that would be very verbose and not very scalable. Here is where loops come in. We can use a loop to repeat a block of code an arbitrary number of times. Here's how we do this in Python. There's a little bit to unpack here. What is this i and what does range mean? i is a variable that we're creating to control the loop. i is just a conventional variable name for this purpose, but we could just as well have called it tomato. The important thing is we're creating a variable and that variable is going to magically increase from one to 10 with each iteration of our loop. The magic here is the range part. This is some functionality that's built into Python that gives us a sequence of numbers controlled, in this case, by the parameters one and 11. The official documentation for range is a little wordy, but there are plenty of examples which illustrate how this can be used. Using range 1, 11 like this gives us a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10. So our previous program is kind of equivalent to this. Hopefully it's easy enough to see what's going on here. This loop will be run 10 times and each time we will print the value of i, which will increment from 1 to 10. 
the print statement is considered to be inside the loop because it's indented. Collectively, all the lines that are inside a loop are called the loop body. Now that we've got a basic for loop working, it's time to try something a little bit more advanced. This range functionality supports a third parameter called step, which is how much I should change with each iteration. By default, this is set to one, which means that I increases by one each time the loop runs. But by specifying a different value for step, we can vary the behavior of the loop. For example, this loop will print decreasing numbers from 10 to one. Note that the loop always stops before the value of i becomes equal to our second parameter. So in this case, the loop will end before i becomes zero. I'm gonna end this lesson with a small programming challenge, which happens to be an extremely popular interview question called FizzBuzz. Write a program that will print numbers one to 100. If the number is divisible by three, write fizz instead. If the number is divisible by five, write buzz. If the number is divisible by both three and five, write fizz buzz. We need to know a few more things before we can tackle this, but they're fairly straightforward. First, to check if one number is divisible by another, you can use this snippet. There's a fair amount to unpack here, so bear with me. Firstly, this is called an if-else statement. If the condition following the if is true, then the first indented section will be executed. Otherwise, the section following the else will be executed. Pretty simple, right? The percent sign is called the modulo operator, and this gives us the remainder after a division. The double equals sign is called the equality operator, and this is how we check if two values are equal. In other words, if the remainder after dividing i by two is equal to zero, our if condition evaluates to true, and we will print i is divisible by two. You can also add in additional conditions using elif, short for else if. The conditions are checked from top to bottom, and if any one of them is true, then the others following it will be skipped. So the else block will only be executed if none of the other conditions are met. Finally, you can combine multiple conditions using AND. That should be everything we need to write our FizzBuzz program. If you want to have a stab at this challenge yourself, pause the video now. In a few seconds, I'll reveal my solution. We might improve on this in another lesson, but it's good enough for now. We start with a for loop that iterates over numbers one to 100. In the loop body, we first check if i is divisible by both three and five. It's important that we test this condition first because it's the strictest condition. If we tried to check this at the end, then the program would never print fizzbuzz because the other conditions would take priority. Next, we check if i is divisible by three, then by five, and finally, if all else fails, we print the number itself. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to programming and if you have any questions then please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments.